right? When we eat something, I don't care what it is, much of it, if you if you look in this movie I have going, it's going to be converted into glucose. So, is sugar good? Is it bad? Well, it's necessary. <laughs> They're all carbohydrates, and there's monosaccharides, one sugar, and that's what the story is about. Look at this again. Look at the glucose. It cannot get into the liver or the muscles of the adipose. And that's, that seems like a bad situation. We've got all this blood glucose, and it's piling up, and that is diabetes going on. But watch what happens. The pancreas is going to step in and release insulin. And the insulin now is in the bloodstream, and the story is a little different. Because now the liver and the muscles and the fat can receive glucose. All right. And that is the normal condition. Uh, and sometimes there's a little delay, you know, sometimes we might have a little hypoglycemia briefly. Look at here's the receptor. And now the GLUT gate is going to open up. And that's how glucose gets into our cells. All right, remember that story because there's other ways it works. Di means two, two sugars bonded together. So we take a glucose, basically a blood sugar, fruit sugar, and now we have table sugar, disaccharide. Polysaccharides, many sugars. All right, and I talked about this story. Homeostasis was what the movie's about. And thank goodness we have insulin and receptors. All right. Fructose versus glucose. Okay, so fruit sugar is different. Here's the story we just saw. Pancreas, insulin. Glucose is too big to store. So our liver says, hey, man, let's compress it down to glycogen. And that's your energy drink because well, here's the reaction. Take a look here. Glucose. And our body says, hey, we don't need this glucose right now, okay? We're just sitting down. So let's turn it into glycogen, polysaccharide. And then later this afternoon, I missed my lunch, but I'm still going strong because the glycogen is going to be broken back down to glucose. I love it, man. But fructose is different because it doesn't require insulin. Here's the fructose reaction. It just requires a little aldolase enzyme. It's like it's too fast, okay? It gives us a, a sugar high, like high fructose corn syrup. Man, you get buzzing on this stuff, and either you get hyperactive, or you burn it off, or you put it as fat. And a lot of people put it as fat. So I always stay away from uh, fructose corn syrup. Right. Should we be organic? Okay, well, all chemicals of life are built on carbon. I don't care if it's a protein or what. So keep that in mind when we're talk, you know, I'm talking about this stuff. Because no matter what we eat, our body is going to decide what to do with it. Now here's the reaction we just saw. With corn syrup, fructose corn syrup, goes straight into the liver. And for many people... It's resulting in overproduction of liver fat. And so fruit sugar is not always as healthy as people think. I don't like this idea of muscle mass loss. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I mentioned this unrestricted way. The body just converts it into ATP and into fat so quickly. Resistant starches are different, right? They're made of sugars, like a starch. But starch, all you need is some amylase enzyme. Like when you're chewing a pizza, you can do a lot of the digesting right in your mouth. In fact, you probably should do a lot of chewing uh, so you don't get a big bloated belly later. But a cellulose, like a plant a fiber, is soluble. And it's twisted and wrapped in sheets. Look at it over on the far right. And we cannot digest this stuff, okay? It goes through our small intestines, and we cannot break it down. And you might think, well, why should I eat this? 
Well, well, here's a good reason. Because the simple carbohydrates are held together by these hydrogen bonds, and we break it with amylase. But resistant starches, they're going to feed the bacteria in the colon. And they're going to ferment it into but butyrate, which I really love this stuff. So here's starch. Okay, we get quick energy, and then we're exhausted. Here's resistant starch. Bacteria are going to ferment it and make butyrate. And they're going to release vitamins. They're going to boost my immune system. It's all happening in the colon. Here's my first breakfast today. Every, every week it's different because whatever is in the grocery store, I got to sell some figs and jalapenos. Next week, I'll get some squash. All right? But I cook this stuff. Right? I don't know if I could eat it just raw like that. But this idea of um, butyrate is really fascinating. We're leaving the carbs behind and on to the fats. Lipids, they have a hydrophilic, it's a water-loving head, hydrophobic tail. You might say, well, who cares? Well, I mean, it keeps us waterproof. So we jump in a swimming pool, we don't swell up like a sponge, right? Now, some adipose ends up uh, expanding as we gain weight. And this can be a problem because there's not many blood vessels in adipose. If you put your hand on your booty right now, it's probably cold. Because once these adipose cells fill up, the body kind of loses interest. Um, and that's why dieting is difficult because we want to we stop before we get this far. I'll talk about some solutions in a bit. Okay, here's a triglyceride. So when you have a lipid blood panel uh, for your blood test, they often test for triglycerides because that's what's in our blood and what's in our food. Try three tails. All right, even though fats are all similar with having the head and the tail, their bonding is different. Unsaturated, look at this space here. This is polyunsaturated. They tend to be liquid at room temperature. And what I like is that the liver is going to take polyunsaturated fats and make them into ketones. Now, ketones are bizarre because they're a form of energy, but they're not glucose. They go into every cell and cross blood-brain barriers. So for dieting, there's some experimental work being done with ketones, but you have to be smart about it. Now, Saturated fats, they're going to go uh, into our blood vessels if we're not careful. That's called atherosclerosis. So here we are when we're 12 and 21, 35, 60, 70, slowly occluding our blood vessels. We start dying, slowly dying and after about age 13 in a way. <laughs> okay, saturated, the bad ones. The question mark is there because, you know, we don't know for sure because uh, some of this is speculation. Uh, when we eat fats, you know, they get just, just torn apart. And does it really matter if it's a steak or natural peanut butter? Now, in the case of peanut butter, you can hydrogenate it. It's called hydrogenation. And what you're doing is you're going to pump hydrogen into a polyunsaturated See all the space there? And you're going to saturate it with hydrogens. And why do we do this? Well, this is kind of messy. You have to stir it. And why not just pump it full of hydrogens? And now we can just work on it with t toast. But I would stick with the natural stuff because I am a believer in polyunsaturated. There's enough good evidence to support it. Stay away from hydrogenated fats. French fries. I don't know. I like a steak once in a while, but go easy on it. Steroids are fats, right? The, uh, the, in this case, it's a cholesterol carbon ring, which we see here, all right? So estrogen, testosterone, man, they look so similar. Just small differences. Now, oh, yeah, let's see Marion Jones. Uh, she lost five gold medals at the Australian Olympics because of anabolic steroid abuse. Okay, so 
I'm going to keep talking a little bit while Marion's warming up here. Uh, genes control our steroids. So if someone goes on anabolic steroids too young, then these epiphyseal plates between their bones are going to seal. And that's going to stop growth. If you know someone who's in their teens and is juicing it, uh, injecting steroids, uh, tell them, no bueno, man, because it can stunt their growth and shorten their life. Like here we have one of my favorites, Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> you can see the effects of steroids. Hey, here, okay, here's Marion Jones. Five Olympic gold medals. Now look at her. See her out in front? She's dynamite, okay? That was Australia. The Olympics there. Go, Marion, go. Too bad she got disqualified, though. Proteins. So we, we're leaving the fats behind. We're moving to proteins. Not a good source of energy. I'll tell you why. Because it's this nitrogen group. Right? And here's the structure of a, a protein. Now, you might say, hey, I don't care about all this chemistry, man. You know, I like my... Uh, my protein shake but I don't think you should like it too much because well let's just go into this amino acids which are what proteins are made out of have a nitrogen and that nitrogen is a problem because well here it is it has a atomic attraction to hydrogen so all it needs is three hydrogens and it becomes ammonia now I don't know if you've ever smelled ammonia before but it is very toxic and so when we eat amino uh, acids or proteins, this all gets torn apart, all right? The stomach acids, the enzymes are going to just shred this thing. And now you have nitrogen floating around, and bam, bam, bam. Before you know it, you've got ammonia. And it's so much work. Look at this. This is a urea cycle because ammonia has to be converted through many reactions into something harmless and water-soluble called urea. Uh, it's a heavy workload for the liver. Now we get a little bit of energy because the main carbon structure uh, can be converted into glucose or ketones. So we get some energy from protein, but I'd rather give it, get it from a, a carbohydrate, you know, like a resistant carb, something like that. Something that um, my body can burn without producing ammonia. All right, structure matters when we're talking about proteins because polypeptide, many amino acids together, structural, like collagen elastin, it's kind of twisted or sheet like. It makes sense. So, skin and hair and fingernails, they're kind of elastic. So, the molecule is elastic. Regulator proteins, so I mentioned amylase in the mouth that digests starch. Carrier proteins, hemoglobin in red blood cells, complex folding, and then contractile proteins, so uh, muscle fibers right here. Now, the reason I put the protein powder in here is that people think, okay, I'm going to have some protein while I work out. And they think it's going to go into the muscles, but there's a good likelihood that that protein is going to go into collagen or into like saliva or red blood cells or even be converted into fat and so it's the body I remember my one of my first statements the body does what it wants to with what we eat thanks for listening